This is my smoked chicken stew with homemade ricotta gnocchi. This is the best chicken stew recipe that I have ever made, ever had, ever tried. And I hope you give it a try. It is so easy on a difficulty scale of one to 10, I'm ranking this a three. You can do it. If you don't have a smoker, don't worry. You can absolutely roast your chicken with these same exact directions. If you are the type that boils your chicken in your soups, give this method a try. It will make your chicken so velvety, soft and moist and delicious, you won't even believe it. It'll be a whole new texture difference for you to try. And you probably heard me mention in that beginning title, homemade ricotta gnocchi. Yes, these pillowy soft, dumpling-like gnocchis will be the finishing touch to our stew that will absolutely warm your bones and your hearts. If you're hungry just hearing about this, I'd love for you to go ahead and season that like button heavily and take a big bite out of that juicy subscribe button if you haven't already. Now let's get cooking. Let's start with preparing our chicken. If you're using a smoker, like a pellet smoker, like this Halo Prime 1500 or whatever else you have, go ahead and preheat that to 230 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're gonna roast this chicken in your oven, go ahead and preheat your oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Now to prepare our chicken for smoking or roasting, go ahead and dry it off with paper towels. I'm gonna to season this bird with my absolute favorite bird seasoning, hot dirty bird from Cosmos Q. If I'm doing any kind of poultry, this is my go-to seasoning. I'll link it in the description if you'd like to scoop it up. You are welcome to use your favorite rub or try a seasoning combo like salt, pepper, smoked paprika, garlic and onion powder, and a touch of cayenne. You can't go wrong with a seasoning blend like that. Just mix and match and, and examine and try new different measurements as you go. Season the chicken all over, patting it down as you go. Be sure to lift the skin off the breasts and have a buddy season those breasts up while you lift up that skin. There we go. Now that our bird is ready, go ahead and drop it in the smoker on the top rack or in your oven, and we're gonna cook it until we're at 160 degrees Fahrenheit in the internal portion of the breasts. Now while our chicken's cooking, let's go ahead and prepare the rest of our ingredients. You're gonna want one whole onion, diced up, two to three carrots, sliced, two to three celery stalks, sliced, and six cloves of garlic, minced up. You can use a garlic press if you want here. If you don't have one, I'll link in the description below. Now, when your chicken is around 140 degrees Fahrenheit internal, use a meat thermometer to check it. We're gonna go ahead and start cooking our stew. Toss in three to four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Toss those onions in and give them a healthy pinch of salt and pepper. You wanna cook those onions for about two to three minutes and then go ahead and add your carrots, celery, and garlic. Stir those up to combine and let all those flavors and aromas begin to come together and fill your house with those amazing smells. Once those veggies have become softened, give them a taste to see if they need seasoned. Try a carrot. Add more salt and pepper to your liking, and now we're gonna add two cups of low sodium chicken stock. Why low sodium? I prefer not to let the stock dictate how my stew or soups are seasoned. That's, that's, that's me, you do you. Add two bay leaves, cause you know they don't do anything. Stir and bring it to a low simmer and let it go while we go get our chicken ready. When your chicken reaches that 160 degrees Fahrenheit internal on the breasts, go ahead and remove it and tent it with foil just to let it rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. Let your stew slowly simmer during this portion. It's gonna be fine. Now, after your chicken's rested, go ahead and slice it up. I like to start with the legs and thighs. Using your knife, follow right along the line of the legs carefully slicing that skin through to the front of the bird and cut right through. Do the same on the other side and cut the breasts. I prefer to start from the sides of the breasts and cut with the knife feeling along the ribs of the bird and cut right above them all the way to the breastbone. Then cut down from the top and remove the breast and tender meat all at once. Don't worry about those wings. Just go ahead and slice them off and eat them up, okay? You enjoy those, you deserve it. Now remove the skin from the breasts legs and thighs. Feel free to go ahead and eat that too if you like, it's delicious. Slice out any meat that you may have missed and now go ahead and chop up all that delicious and incredibly juicy meat. Roasting or smoking your chicken for your stews is so much more flavorful than just tossing it in the broth and boiling it to death. We wanna add flavor here and add complexity to the soup and these methods will do just that. Once you have your chicken all chopped up to your liking, add it to your simmering stew. The aromas in your house should be absolutely magical right now. Now you're gonna want one cup of heavy cream. Trust me, you want heavy cream. We're making a stew here. Add one tablespoon of flour and whisk it up. 
Now go ahead and add three to five sprigs of fresh thyme to your stew, along with your heavy cream mixture, and get it stirred up. Let it simmer and let that heavy cream and flour do its magic while we go ahead and make our ricotta gnocchi. For our gnocchi, we're gonna need one pound of whole milk ricotta and one egg plus one egg yolk. Add a little bit of salt and pepper, stir that up, and then grab two cups of flour. This part's important. Using a fine mesh strainer, if you don't have one, I'll link to one below, sift your flour over your ricotta mixture. Don't overwork your gnocchi. That's what makes it tough. Less is definitely more here. Lightly combine the flour and ricotta a little at a time, sifting the flour over the ricotta mix as you go. Get your hands in that pillowy cheese dust and mix lightly. Now sift a little bit of flour onto your work surface and turn your dough out onto it. It should be pretty shaggy, that's okay. Like I said, don't overwork it. Now form it all into a ball and just press it together. Once you have it all pressed together, press it down into a flat round shape about three quarters of an inch to one inch thick. Now cut them into strips. You decide how large you want them. I like mine a little bit larger, more like small dumpling size. Gnocchi literally translate to English as lump. So those perfectly sized little potato gnocchi that you're used to seeing are not what we're going for here, but can be if you want. These ricotta gnocchi should be so pillowy soft you just wanna rest your head on them and just take a little snooze. Anyway, cut them into little lumps, as large as you like. It's okay if they're many different sizes. Now just press your finger into them to create a little dimple into the lump. If you have a gnocchi board or paddle, you can absolutely use that, but using your finger will create that rustic and honestly much more traditional look of the gnocchi of times long gone. After you've dented the gnocchi, sift a bit more flour onto your work surface and just give them a little roll. At this point, your stew should be simmering away and beautifully thick. Add in your fresh ricotta gnocchi, stir and let them simmer for another 15 to 20 minutes. After that time, test one of them. They should be perfect, pillowy soft, and luxuriously satisfying. When you taste them, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. It should make you smile. Fill your bowl, top it with fresh parsley, let it cool, it's boiling lava hot right now, and then devour it, my friends. I hope you enjoy one of the most satisfying meals that I have ever personally made. As always, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.